The Pocketbook Ink Pad Color 3 has quickly become my favorite e-reader. I've been using it a little over six months now, and it offers some really unique features that you don't see in many other e-readers. The color screen technology is called Kaleido 3, and it's the only e-reader with this screen that has full waterproofing with an IPX8 rating, making it the perfect beach companion. Best of all, there are no logins required to use it, and it comes with a host of basic apps and a browser, which makes getting eBooks, comics, or PDFs very easy on it. It's quickly replaced my old Kobo black and white e-reader. So full disclosure, the first Pocketbook unit that I had was sent to me by Pocketbook, but I was on the train one day and I left the e-reader on my laptop and I took a nap. And then when I woke up, I didn't realize, but it had slipped off. And so that actually brings me to my first point that the case, which gives a little more grip on the back, is something I would highly recommend. This is the standard case. They have a pretty cool little mechanism here that kind of clicks in and you can pop accessories. If you look in the back, there's some metallic pins and I just learned that they offer a Qi charging case, which is about the same price. So I would actually recommend that over this one. But if you just want a simple case, then this one is good. And I think it might be a little bit lighter because that one has a back component to it. But just FYI, so you don't have the same issue as me, the back, while it appears kind of textured, it is pretty slippery on surfaces. So this video is actually sponsored by me. I ended up liking it so much that I bought a unit myself, which came in this kind of mangled case from Amazon. But bottom line, if you're gonna get this, I would highly recommend a case. My old unit, which didn't have a case, I also ended up getting a scratch on the screen. So it is nice to have that peace of mind. And it also has a magnetic wake-unwake feature it also magnetically adheres to the back, so it's a pretty clean reading experience. So this is a book I'm reading called Advancing Your Photography. And so you can see right here, these kind of sample photos, they look a lot like a film grain of some sort. And it's just really cool to be able to read this book that is, like this chapter is about visualization, and it allows me to actually visualize that. And sure, I could read this on my phone and it would be a more vibrant experience, but I just like reading this before bed sometimes, so I'm not kind of using my phone. And uh, when you're outside and there's sun reflecting on it, it does pop a little bit more too. But yeah, if, if you're kind of into books that have more visual aid style things, then this is a really, really cool experience. Besides the comic aspect, I think this is one of the things I've enjoyed the most on it. Getting into the physical specs a little bit, it has a 7.8 inch screen, which is exactly the same size as my Nomad here. And it weighs 270 grams, this weighs 266, so very similar. But the 7.8 inch screen size is pretty nice. My old reader was a six inch screen. And because this has color, I think having a little bit of a bigger size is really nice. If you're reading comics or eBooks that have color pictures of some sort, I mean, you'll see this old Kobo I have has a big bezel, but it's almost roughly the same size, so that extra screen real estate's really nice. There's a 2900 milliamp hour battery in here, and I've only had to charge it every couple weeks or so. The battery life has been very good from my experience, but that will depend on how bright you're using the front light that it has. There's 32 gigabytes of storage that is not expandable, so you get roughly about 28 gigabytes available and it does come preloaded with books, so if you're tight for storage, I'd recommend deleting those from the get-go. But it's nice that it comes with some content on it, kind of some classics and some demo screens that I'll, I'll insert some B-roll here of. Kaleido 3 is significantly better than Kaleido 2. Kaleido 2, I think, had 125 PPI for colors. This is 150, which is a pretty noticeable difference. And when you're using it in black and white mode, it has 300 PPI. So the same as this Super Note Nomad here. Khalid Rakami did a review of this and he has the non-color version. So I'll insert a little clip here from his video that shows you the color screens. They have a little less contrast because of the matrix of color RGB that they have in the front. So just FYI, if you're not gonna be reading color, then the non-color version is probably a better option. But 
this one's cool because you can do both. And I haven't found the contrast to be that much of an issue because it has the front light and you can kind of increase that contrast on a whim when you want to. It has one gigabyte of RAM as well. And there is a little speaker on the side here, which we'll get a little bit more into later, where you can have audiobooks play. You can also connect Bluetooth speakers to it or headphones. That is a nice option when you just want to be listening to something. And the text to dictation we'll get a bit more into later as well. But it is generally pretty good. While you can swipe pages just doing that, it is nice they have these kind of raised buttons in the front where you can also do page turns like that. And that's something I actually find myself using a lot more than the swipe feature. The big screen is also nice for comics because sometimes the text can be a little small. And so having that 7.8 inch screen is nice because you don't need to do a lot of resizing or rescaling for comics. So I'm going to pause it really quickly. Um, the microphone is pretty close to it right now. You'll see there's a speaker right here. It's a single speaker. There's no stereo here. Now we'll change to British. Any equipment, just you and the scene. Think of it as a workout for your eye. I often will walk into an environment and just know there is an image there. Really quickly talking about pricing. This is a relatively expensive e-reader at 329 because there's so much technology packed in here. But when I rebought mine because I lost the first one, I ended up getting it at 279. So there are sales once in a while that will go on for this. If you ended up getting on sale with the cover, you could probably get it around the 300 price point. You can check the updated prices in the affiliate links below. That is the best way to support the channel if you're finding this review useful at no additional cost to you. This is a little example of what I wanted to show you about the color accuracy. So, I mean, you can see everything's a lot more muted here in terms of the greens. The blue is a very different kind of spectrum of blue. The orange, the purple is actually probably the closest to real life. But despite it not really popping as much as this, I still think it looks pretty good. In my kind of viewing experience, I've compared it a bit to film. So like a, a film camera, you know, is nowhere near the fidelity or the quality of a digital camera, but it does kind of have a very cool nostalgic vibe to it. And uh, I kind of enjoy it actually. So let's go into some other pages here. So from here to here, it just looks like a darker shade of gray. Whereas here it looks like it's kind of a blue gray to then a purple. And so you really don't get as much contrast, but for the reading experience, it still kind of does the job. And I think that it provides a pretty good experience in general. There is a little bit of ghosting once in a while, but it's really not that bad. Splinter is a good example here. So his robe and his face look almost the, sh the same kind of brown shade, whereas here you can really see it's a maroon and brown. And so there are certain color ranges on the spectrum that it doesn't get perfectly. But uh, let's go to the settings here. You can also do fit to width. So now, but then you have a little bit of scroll that you need to do. And so I actually, I normally just leave it in this, uh, this fit to page mode. But then here's where I kind of want to go. The contrast and adjustment. This is something that I played around a lot with. And I actually, I, I was doing real time comparison. I did not find that any of the adjustments I made made a significant change for the better. At different points, I played around with it again. But honestly, I think the stock viewing experience is pretty good. And that's actually one of the things I like about this. Like the Books tab Mini, you can play around as much as you want, and it's got a lot of fine control. But it's really more of a niche thing. This is kind of a reader, and it's just something you want to like pull out a book and just be able to read it and enjoy it. And so I think that's actually a really big benefit of the Pocketbook InkPad 3. It's just a nice viewing experience from the get go. The Books Tab Mini C is another kind of e-reader that has the same screen, but it's not waterproof. So that is a good option if you do want to be note taking as well. But this is a more dedicated and focused device, whereas that uh, has Android apps and has the whole gamut of things you can install in it. Also, while some e-readers, you'll notice the screen is flush with the border. This one's a little recessed inwards, which does mean that you get a closer to the screen experience which can be, can be nice and 
allows for a little more clarity and it just looks better in general. Getting into the software, I've found the experience to be pretty smooth overall. It does have a quad core processor. And one of the cool things is you're able to annotate and have text selection for notations that you wanna make. There's also a mode here where you can do kind of a pencil so you can actually write on the screen. There's no pen input support, but it is nice because I think that's cross compatible. So I'll get into the app a little bit later, but I'll show you on my phone as well. The document support in general is very good. I'll try to list them on the screen here so you can see which documents are supported, but you can have PDFs, um, CBRs, which are like comic formats and EPUBs, of course. There's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, and the built-in browser is a good option to have because you can go to things like Project Gutenberg or other sites that have free EPUBs and you can download books directly on the device. You don't even need to sync it up to your laptop. But when you do sync it up to your laptop, there's the option to charge it and the PC link. The dark mode's also nice, but it does introduce a little bit more ghosting. Depending on the scenario you're reading it, that can give you maybe a little bit more contrast if you're reading like a black and white book. For color, I would not recommend it, but it is a good option to have. This is my first pocketbook device, so I've actually been pretty impressed with the software overall. One of my favorite features that my Kobo also had is on the left side here, you can swipe up or down and control the color temperature. And then on the right side, you can control the actual front light brightness. That's really useful. Instead of having to drop down and go through a menu system, you can actually just control that there. And there also is a feature in the software where you can control the light based on the time of day. So if you really want to customize it, you can do that. But I like the quick access of just being able to control the brightness right from the book itself. I do like having built-in dictionaries for those times when you don't know a word and you just want to easily look it up. And the dictionaries can be downloaded so you don't have to have online access to have that word be looked up. For the apps on this, like I mentioned, there is a browser, which is, it works decently well. It's e-ink, so it's not gonna be the most fast or responsive thing, but there's also a calculator, calendar and clock, a dictionary, there's a gallery, so you can upload photos if you want and kind of view them on this color screen. There's a music player as well. There are some games as well, which is nice when you're on the beach or on a plane or something. There's a chess, Sudoku, there's a card game as well. And then there's like this coloring feature where you can kind of fill in or like a, a scribble function. Now getting into the Pocketbook kind of sync and the app, there is Dropbox Pocketbook available and the Pocketbook Cloud. There's also a send a Pocketbook feature, but you can log in on your phone and uh, I believe there's, you can log in online as well and you can transfer kind of EPUBs between those and the sync works quite well between the devices. Or like I mentioned, you can go into the browser and just download them straight there. And the download system is pretty fluid and pretty clean from my experience. But it's nice on the phone app as well, you can do those annotations and they will sync between your devices. So if you forgot your e-reader and you wanna read on your phone and you wanna pick up where you left off or wanna see your annotations, that's definitely possible and a nice feature to have. Before I had the pocketbook, I never really thought that I would use color much, but having this device, it is my first Kaleido 3 device. I've really enjoyed it, and it's kind of opened up my reading world to different things that I wouldn't normally do on my Kobo here, or even on my Supernote Nomad or Remarkable 2 here. But yeah, I've been really enjoying this device, and I really like the host of features that it has. It's really become my favorite way to go on a beach or in my travel pocket when I fly, I always take this or on the train or something. Hopefully I won't lose one again on the train. I've kind of learned my lesson. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you want to see my productivity tools that I use of a lot of these e-ink devices, I'll leave that here for you. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.